TikTok, which is one of the newest platforms, one of the craziest platforms, and if you don't follow me over there, I've been popping just a little bit, but that's not what we're here to talk about. What we're here to talk about is how you can use TikTok, which is one of the single newest and largest platforms right now in the social space, and you can utilize it for your business in literally the craziest way. Now, what's interesting about this video versus anything else I've shared on the channel, I'm a Facebook ad guy, right? I dabble in Google a little bit. I, I, I do other marketing stuff, and I've been doing it for like five years. I made a good amount of money doing that. But I've never seen something quite like TikTok, and what we're gonna share and go through in this video is how you can do this without spending $1. I've seen this done, I know how to do this, it's absolutely bonkers, and then I'm gonna show you the paid strategy, which is pretty dang guaranteed. So, this is absolutely crazy. In my opinion, there is no marketing platform like this. It doesn't make TikTok better, it doesn't make something else worse, it's just something to take a look at because it could definitely be a great opportunity for anyone. So, I'm about to share this with you. We're gonna dive into my computer and go through this quick little presentation. So. If you're ready for it, make sure to drop a like, grab your cup of coffee or whatever it is you're up to, and let's go through this. So TikTok plus Shopify, what we're gonna talk about in this video specifically is how to run TikTok ads. We're gonna touch on the organic side of things, what you can do to just make a TikTok video go viral. We're gonna dive pretty deep. I'm gonna walk you through all of this. I mean, I have a bunch of slides here I wanna show you. So the two angles of attack, like we just mentioned, organic versus paid. So organic, in, in my opinion, this has been the craziest platform to watch in terms of growth, okay? So just to give you a little perspective on this, a little over four and a half years ago, I was growing Instagram pages, and now I had theme pages based around funny fight videos, car pictures, it wasn't really videos for cars, but pictures of boats, pictures of cars, houses, stuff like that, right? And I would be growing and do these crazy growth strategies. I'd grow three to 500 followers a day, sometimes a thousand followers a day. So I built up you know, all these different pages, had a couple million followers between everything, and I started making money through it. But that took six months, a year, a year and a half to build. I see people do this on TikTok in two weeks. It's absolutely insane, and I've already experienced this for myself a little bit. So the organic is great. We're gonna talk about that strategy in a moment. Now, from the paid ad platform, what they're actually doing, and we're gonna talk about this, is a credit matching. I've never seen any other ad platform do this, at least not any major player. I think the number's 2,400, but whatever you do, they're gonna match up to that. So for an example, they'll give you up to $2,400 to spend if you spend 2,400. So in reality, it just allows you to kind of spend double by testing with less money. So it is a great thing and they're trying to incentivize advertisers to maybe migrate from other platforms and let's keep it real. This last 12 months, there's been a lot of new issues popping up with the other advertising platforms. Facebook in particular, not to mention the current FTC lawsuit that started on December 9th that is still in the works, as well as the, the big dispute that everybody seems to be talking about between Apple, their new iOS update, and Facebook, which could potentially put some huge gaps in our pixel tracking, which would definitely affect pretty much every advertiser in a little bit of a way. It wouldn't kill the ad platform, but it would definitely affect things like retargeting and making sure that you can track purchase behavior and different shopping behaviors, okay? So we're gonna go through this. Let's start with organic, okay? What I recommend you do, if you have a new account, and this would be for an e-commerce business. If you go to, a, let's say you sell, I don't even know, shoes, right? And your, your website is called amazingshoes.com, just as an example, or sportsshoes.com, okay? Sportsshoes.com, let's say you go make an Instagram page for it, sports shoes. You make a Facebook page for it, sports shoes and then you make a TikTok for it. If you consistently post content to all three of these, I can guarantee you, even if you post the same video, I can guarantee you TikTok will do better. I can guarantee it. And, and the reason for that is because if you follow what I'm about to show you and you post consistently on the platform, it's such a new platform and the algorithm shoots off in a thousand different directions. It's not all bogged down by millions of creators over the last decade like Facebook and Instagram. This platform's so new and I've seen this from my own personal page as well as one of my e-commerce stores, I've only put one of them on TikTok, but it's crazy. The amount of organic reach that you can get, it doesn't translate into sales volume very much, but that social proof which can help close a deal basically, right? Someone goes to your sports shoes page from a TikTok ad, which we're about to talk about, they click on it, they see you have 36,000 followers and in 84 posts, 
you look like a brand. It's more legit. You're building that brand. You are becoming a brand. You're getting yourself out there and you're building a following, which is an asset, okay? So from an organic perspective, an easy way that you can do this, only a couple minutes a day, post one video a day to build that account up. Get the momentum. You kind of get to see what works. Try a few different styles. You might have a video that pops off, gets 30,000, 100,000 views, maybe, right? Try to try a bunch of different stuff. Observe the marketplace. But then, once you've been doing this for a week or two, you got a little bit of a profile built out. Try bumping your posting up to two to three times a day. Just being open and honest, what I'm doing right now on my personal TikTok is the same exact thing I'm doing on my e-commerce TikTok. And that's two posts a day, one towards the morning, one towards the evening. A quick way that you can kind of hack the system and see what works best on TikTok in terms of viewership. One thing you can do for your account specifically is go to the posting button as if you're gonna post and go over to live. But don't actually start live streaming. It'll tell you you have X amount of followers live. So once you start growing, you have a few thousand followers, it'll say there's 620 people live. And then later in the day, 530. So you can kind of keep your eye on that throughout the day. And that's how you can, at least in one way, identify what the best times to post are, okay? So definitely bump up that posting schedule. One thing that you can do, this is just something I do. I only do this on my personal TikTok. My e-commerce one is handled by my team. But you can sit down and do them all at once and then save them to your draft, which is a really cool thing. So I just sit down for like an hour and then I get a couple days worth of stuff done and then you know post it as needed, okay? Now, the only two real criteria that matter on TikTok from an organic growth perspective are your watch time as well as your engagement. So it's really similar to YouTube. YouTube, does, I don't know exactly how their algorithm works on TikTok, but I know for a fact YouTube does a lot of A-B split tests. It's not just one. So for an example, I post a video like this video. They're gonna run it against another TikTok video, right? By the way, I appreciate you guys being here. If you wanna help me out, drop a like, drop a comment. Doesn't even matter what you say. Here's what, what happens. They A-B split test, okay? And so, if you really wanna help me out, just watch the whole video. Even if you're not gonna watch, just leave it on. But what they do is they A-B split test and they determine which video has an, a higher average watch time and then based on the viewership, how many people are liking and commenting, which one has a higher engagement rate. So the video that gets a bigger percentage watch time and a higher engagement is gonna kind of advance to the next round and get put against a better video and then a better, and that's how they build their algorithm system in a very basic layman's term, right? So the same thing is pretty much going on with TikTok where one thing you want to focus on is your watch time. The videos that have a very high watch time are going to do a lot better. So the easiest way to do this is have an interesting video. Now, if you can take a 60 second video and make it more interesting, but then it's only 30 seconds, do it because you'll keep an average watch time that's higher than a more boring video. So it'll perform better. Now your engagement, obviously one thing I like to do that sparks the engagement is your caption. So I've actually started putting a lot of attention on this and I'm kind of a creative person when it comes to stuff. I like to, on TikTok specifically, I like to throw little jabs and piss people off. That's kind of what gets everybody riled up and engaged. And I don't really care if people are making fun of me or whatever, but it's kind of funny to see. I'll, uh, for example, I posted a, a video showing before and after the remodels on my duplex. And in the caption, just as an example, I said rate one through 10. And a bunch of people were like, it's a four, it's a two, this was terrible, it looks like dog trash. And it was a beautiful renovation, absolutely amazing. And most people said 10, right? But nonetheless, None of those people would have rated it one out of 10. They probably wouldn't even have commented had I not asked that question. For an example, just being honest, and you, you can see on my TikTok anyways, I've, I've gave a tour of my condo here in Puerto Rico, right? I'm sitting in my condo in Puerto Rico. Everybody was asking how much it costs. I didn't want to talk about it initially, but literally 50% of the comments after I showed it, how much does it cost? So I made a video on that. This is a $12,000 a month condo, right? And there's a reason I live here, but nonetheless, everybody's like, oh, that's ridiculous. And I asked, I said, is it worth it? And it was funny to see the reactions of people. The comments just went insane. So the amount of comments I saw as those comments started flooding in, the views started going up because you could clearly tell that it was getting pushed to more and more people. So just funny little stuff like that by putting a little bit of attention on a caption can really help drive that engagement. Even if it means you go from six comments to eight comments, that's a big difference. That's like a 30% gain. And so TikTok will value that when it comes to placing that better in their algorithm, which will help you reach more organic people. So that's the organic. Now, let's talk about the paid side of things. This is how we make money. It's how we, kind of what we talk about on the channel is paid marketing, something you can control a lot more directly. And it's a skill. So it's something that you can use for all sorts of stuff 
all throughout the years until something really crazy or wackadoo happens with the platform, right? So I have yet to see that happen. Facebook's becoming a monster in terms of disabling ad accounts for no reason and all these policy violations, even though people aren't really doing anything wrong. It's becoming pretty crazy. So it is definitely good to look elsewhere in terms of your marketing. So let's touch on the paid and then I'm gonna give you a full tutorial through how to actually launch an ad, all right? So TikTok's a new marketing platform. Keep that in mind, nothing's flawless. They also offer, like I mentioned, that $2,400 credit match, which is really cool. It's a fun little incentive. What's great about TikTok, and as an advertiser, I appreciate this so much, they have good support, at least for now. They're trying, you know, doing promotions like the $2,400 credit matching. That's to get advertisers in because they probably don't have a ton of advertisers. So they wanna get all these advertisers and I hope, I really hope that their support stays as good as it is because that's really what sets them apart from other platforms. Google has it nailed down. I do have to give Google credit for that. But TikTok, from a marketing platform, they do a great job. As soon as I started spending like $100 a day, three days later, a rep reached out to me, started talking, and it's basically coaching. That person is almost like your coach. You can ask them any question. And what I noticed, it's different from a Facebook ad rep. I was once assigned a Facebook ad rep for an ad account that had spent over a million dollars. And that person, I swear to God, they did not know, and it must've been their first day using the ad account. Like just even being on the ad platform in general, I have no idea how they were hired. I have no idea how Facebook allows them to even communicate. I asked a question. Well, I don't know. Okay, how do I solve this problem to get in touch with this support because it keeps being a glitch with the tracking? Oh, I don't know, they never told us that. Okay, what do you think? This was like a year ago during all the CBO transitions. Okay, what do you think about this and this strategy with transitioning to CBOs? Well, I don't know what that is. Okay, well, how should I transition to CBOs very effectively? Uh, yeah, they didn't really teach us much of that, but you know, when you have your pixel and he starts talking about all this, it was ridiculous, right? So TikTok, absolutely amazing. They'll assign you a support rep and I definitely recommend you use it, ask questions, talk about different strategies because they will give you a lot of cool strategies. Now, the platform is actually really similar to Facebook. So if you're familiar with Facebook, you'll kind of notice this as I go through this here in a moment, but as you're using it, it'll be very familiar. It feels really familiar for me, which is great. I really like that, okay? So I just want to kind of run you through each step just so you know what you're going to be having thrown at you when you're getting started. Similar to any platform, they kind of give you your objective traffic or you're trying to reach people or conversions. If you're an e-commerce store, you're probably rocking with conversions to start with. So you know, select conversions, you can name your campaign, whatever you want. You have your AB split test right here. Um, you know, what's funny, they try to put the budget and just like Facebook, they try to auto check things that are meant to just completely screw you over. So they auto check no budget. So make sure to click no limit, turn that off and then set your budget. Um, you have a daily minimum budget on the campaign of $50 and then at the ad group level, it's 20. Uh, we'll go through all of that here in a moment and you can kind of get a sense for it as you're going through it. But that's just one funny thing to notice. Make sure you do select the daily budget. I'd probably start at $60. I always like to go a little higher than the minimum. Okay, then as you continue on here, name the ad group. You can kind of think about this as campaign, ad set, ad. Very similar to Facebook, right? Three layers. Okay, promotion type website, just like Facebook, just like Google, you have a pixel. Now, one thing I do wanna mention, if you're only running TikTok ads, and this is how you're getting started with your Shopify store, or even whatever platform you're using, that's totally cool, but I do recommend that you install your Facebook pixel. If you want, install your Google pixel. That way you have other pixels on other platforms that are now tracking all the data, right? So that's just an extra little, I don't wanna say it's a layer of security or a backup, but when you do eventually move to those marketing platforms, if you do, uh, that data is there and you'll definitely thank yourself for doing that now. It only takes a minute or two, right? So you just put in your pixel, no big deal. You're going to go down. Just like Facebook, you can select your placements. Um, with Facebook, I used to do a lot of narrowing. I used to go very specific based on the type of device, based on their uh, their location. I used to narrow literally everything. But now with Facebook, I leave it broad. So I kind of adapted the same strategy with TikTok. And I'm definitely no TikTok expert, but I spent a little bit of money on there. Um, you know, not like multi six figures, but I've started dabbling in there a lot. I'm very familiar with their platform. So what I recommend you do is just try one with auto placements and one where you select something specific where you think your customer will be. One easy way to figure out where your customers are going to be, run one that's on automatic or run a couple and then s figure it out there. So you get to actually see it from an ad running. So you're not guessing. I never really like to guess 
with my ads, okay? And then I deselect these. I don't like people to comment on the ads. I don't like people to download it. You'll either get a lot of trolls kind of jumping in there here and here and there. And one thing I've always noticed, and this is especially on Facebook, people comment. Like I started a new store as an example. Someone immediately, day one, jumps in, I ordered from them three months ago. They never replied to my emails. I haven't gotten my product. I it wasn't me, <laughs> like I just opened the store. So you have to like try to explain to them and it makes you look bad saying you just opened, right? You got no trust built. So it's like, yeah, like that wasn't us. Check your order confirmation email. They just see the same product and, and Karen in Kansas City who's 58, she just doesn't know the difference, right? Her, her iPad mini is too small to see the name. So it's just something to think about. I would just turn these off. Don't let people download it because they'll probably just steal your video ad. So nonetheless, this is what it'll look like with these selecting placements. What I do is I deselect these three and I turn these two things off. So I just run it on TikTok, it'll look like this, okay? So let's continue on here. Very similar to Facebook, gender, age, I would follow if I were you, the same strategy that we like to follow on Facebook, which uh, you can find a uh, link below in our Facebook ad program if you wanna learn Facebook ads. But this specifically, I always recommend you go broad. Unless your product is 100% only targeting one gender or is only applicable for one age bracket, it, that's the only situation where you should start with an ad that's narrowed. It's always better to go broad, in my opinion, from my experience, okay? Languages, you can put in your uh, your interest. This is really up top here. This is your custom audience. So once you have lookalikes or if you're doing retargeting, that'll be applicable there. Let's uh, continue going down here. I wanna kind of show you this. So if you're doing uh, something like your interests or behaviors inside of here, like games, non-video games, let's, let's assume in this example, I'm selling a, a game board like Monopoly, right? You're gonna put in games. You can move it out of behaviors, non-video games if it doesn't relate. And then you can select people who have liked or commented on the videos. The reason I like to do this versus watched until the end is just because TikTok is such a fast paced platform. And I know I personally don't watch a ton of videos all the way through. I'm not on TikTok too much, but I'll like something and like my ideas, maybe I'll come back to it later or whatever. But people who like or comment, that shows to me that they're more than engaged enough. They definitely probably watched it or watched a good chunk and they're definitely interested in that type of stuff. So that's why I just select those two for the categories you can again continue getting more specific inside of there. If you wanna really break down your device, again, it's a certain type of narrow. I don't recommend you do it right away. Unless for an example, you're selling a phone case that's only applicable for iPhones. Then in that situation, it would make sense to just do iOS. Okay, so that's an example for you. Now, continuing on here, your budget for the ad group. Uh, what's cool is actually when you start spending some money on TikTok, like I mentioned, you'll get assigned a rep. I recommend you have them just kind of walk you through everything. Because what I've noticed, I've gotten assigned multiple different TikTok reps. I have two different ad accounts for it. But it's funny, they, they all kind of have a little different perspective and I'm still learning so much on this platform. You know, it's, it's a never ending learning curve. So it's really fun to just kind of see every different angle and like a little slight approaches. So always take it from a student approach, even if you're making a ton of money, be open-minded and you know, run a $30 a day ad on something and just test it out. So that's one thing I always like to do. Day partying, this is very similar to on Facebook where they offer what's called a TOAC ad, a time on ad account or a time uh, from the viewer spent. So this is where you can run something specific. So let's say I'm only targeting the US. Well, maybe in my head, people are only on their computer from 5 p.m. when they get home from work until 10 p.m. So I only want my ad to run in that window. That's basically what this option would be, is if you wanna specifically target certain hours of the day. Again, I don't recommend that. I always recommend going broader when you're first getting started, especially. So just kinda of take that with a grain of salt. It's something you can test if you want to, but uh, I don't do any day partying on TikTok. I haven't even remotely tried it, just cause that's something that I haven't needed to do and the ads are performing fine, okay? Then down here, your bid, the last thing, Again, optimizing for a conversion. If you're doing an e-commerce product, you're probably looking for that instant front-end sale. Now, what's funny, every platform has their suggestions. Just like how Facebook and TikTok automatically select certain boxes. You gotta watch out for that, you gotta be careful. They do the same thing with the bid, okay? Facebook does it with their target CPA. They always recommend something. Always, always, always shoot higher. If you want, duplicate this 20 different times, launch 10 of them or 20 of them, and try slightly different ones each time to really see what works for you in your niche. Everything's gonna be different. What I would do in this, I would shoot above this, okay? So for an example, I'm selling a product, our front end offer is 29.99, right? And then we have upsells and our average order value is in the 40s. Well, 
I would not want to run a 713 recommended cost per purchase when I'm willing to pay more than that. So especially when I'm starting, aim high. You want to start collecting sales. You don't want your spending to be cut, which constantly happens, especially on Google if you put your target CPA too low. So very similar to the bid on here, I would probably set it up at like $18, $20. Try something big and then if it starts working, you can kind of try something smaller and you can just feel it out. So again, it's the purpose of testing. Now, a few things that are noteworthy here, just like any other plat uh, platform, breaking even on TikTok is good. I don't understand why people don't like this because if you've been running ads for two weeks, you've spent $400 and it's starting to break even day over day, that's the start of something. You can't expect to launch paid ads on a platform with no data, no social proof, no following, no nothing, and plan to just make a bunch of profit right away. It's happened, it's happened to me, it's very rare, right? So build data first, if you're breaking even, that's great, that's super, super good. If you're breaking even, that means you should double down. Work on your TikTok organic, make sure the page is really good, make sure you set up your Facebook and Instagram account, do little things like that, create new content, that's always gonna help, okay? Like we mentioned, make sure to have your Facebook pixel on your store, it's just data, even if you aren't actively running ads. Uh, oops, and then over here, get coaching from support. As soon as they get in touch, start firing away questions. Anything you're confused about along the way, um, of course, you guys can ask it in the comment section down below. I'm always active inside of there, but definitely ask their support just because that's kind of their job. They get to see probably, I'll bet they're overseeing a couple hundred ad accounts each. So definitely check that out, uh, That that's worth thinking about. Now, one other little strategy, I do this on every platform, but TikTok is even easier, scroll. If you're looking for products or looking to see what works with an ad, start scrolling. I've noticed like every fifth or sixth post for me is some sort of sponsored post. Like half the time it's a software or an app on the phone that's like a game, but if you start clicking on any of the e-commerce product ads that you get, just like Facebook or Google, you're gonna start getting targeted a lot more by those types of things. So it just repeats. So. Hope this like TikTok X Shopify type video really helped you just see what TikTok's all about, understand the ad platform, and now you can turn around and launch ads on TikTok the right way without having to spend a ton of money learning and trying all this crazy stuff, which is important. Testing is always important, but I hope this video gave you a good sense of direction, all right? So I will keep you guys updated. Maybe I'll do a little live running TikTok uh, example if you guys wanna see something. Maybe I can throw together a store and show you guys some live examples. Just let me know in the comment section down below. I'm here to help you guys out. There's also a bunch of free resources linked in the description description. One that you can check out is our eight step free checklist. If you have not started e-commerce, that's going to be the best resource for you to get started. It's really short, really simple, just to kind of help you get started off on the right foot. Then we have our Facebook ad program. And for anyone who wants to work with our advertising agency, where we partner with you directly and we run all the Facebook ads and you have certain steps and things that you do as well, just be sure to book a free call with our advertising agency. You can find that link below as well. All right. Hope you got some value from this video. Just wanted to, I know it's stretched out a little longer, but I wanted to go through TikTok ads and give you guys a basic run through on what that setup should look like so that you can start actually bringing in some sales from a new, very hot platform. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Peace.